Welcome Iconophiles, I'm Fahad Syed, and this video is going to be an exploration and analysis of Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain's E3 2015 trailer, which covers some topics within the broad field of cognitive science that interested me, running the gamut from cognitive nativism to linguistics to memetics to philosophy. In addition to exploring these topics, I will also be discussing the visual themes and cinema of the trailer when applicable. Let's get started. As a foreword, I would like to explain why the content of this trailer fascinates me so much. In my second semester of my freshman year at Rutgers University, I took a course on cognitive science called Human Nature and Diversity. As much as I would like to say that I took this course because I had a pre-existing interest in cognitive science, I really just took it because it gave me credits towards a category I was required to take. But the course quickly became the most influential and provocative course I had taken that year, and it was there under Professor Stephen Stitch that I first learned about Dawkins' theories about selfish genes, memetics, memes as parasites, content and context biases, and most importantly, in relation to this trailer, linguistic nativism and universal grammar. Hideo Kojima has never strayed away from covering brainy topics within his games. Each one of the main games were unified by a common theme. The first game's theme was genes. So it was you and I, two fertilized eggs with exactly the same DNA. They used me as a guinea pig to create a phenotype in which all of the dominant genes were expressed to create you. I got all of the recessive genes. You took everything from me before I was even born. The second games was memes. Human memories, ideas, culture, history. Genes don't contain any record of human history. Is it something that should not be passed on? Should that information be left at the mercy of nature? Right. You seem to think that our plan is one of censorship. Are you telling me it's not? You're being silly. What we propose to do is not to control content, but to create context. Create context? Everyone withdraws into their own small gated community, afraid of a larger forum. The third games was seen. It's just you and me. No one to get in our way. Ocelots are proud creatures. They prefer to hunt alone. Fourth was when Sense. A steps into the light. Uh, uh, unless the light is put out. The shadow cannot be erased. So long as there is light, there is shadow. Peace Walker was, um, gee, I don't know. Peace? The song. It's clearly not thinking rationally. It's not using its head. It's using... It's heart. This is the fate she chose for herself. Yet there doesn't seem to be a validated consensus on theming of the Phantom Pain. And to my knowledge, Mr. Kojima hasn't come out and said the theme. I would say, along with most others, that the theme here would be pain. But as this trailer shows, the exploration of pain is going beyond physical harm or loss. The exploration of this theme that we are seeing here in this trailer connects to Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty's theme, Meme. The wide interpretation of pain in this game encompasses loss, trauma, suffering, and retaliation. Each of the theme's motifs of pain are explored physically, emotionally, psychologically, and ideologically. This trailer focuses on establishing an ideological exploration of pain through language. The opening quote of this E3 trailer expresses the sentiment that will be carried throughout. The feeling of belonging, whether to a nation connecting people within a border, 
or a language connecting people through communication is essential to who we are as human beings. It is within our nature to want to belong, to feel as if our likeness is present somewhere else in the wide world. When our likeness or feeling of belonging is taken away, well, that experience is painful. The author of this quote, the pessimistic philosopher Emilio Chiorin, had worked within philosophy to write essays on decay, the end of civilization, and nihilism. The opening monologue we are listening to in this trailer is spoken by Skullface, who left the tape within some Diamond Dog controlled base. Well, let's just hope it isn't Mother Base. I'd hate to lose a second base. Titled, The Man Who Stole the World, this tape conveys his sentiment of loss and nihilism in a very similar manner to Chiorin's. Skullface is a character whose tagline describes him as a ghost without a past. But here we get to hear about his past. Or rather, the past in which he was someone completely different. A child in Hungary, whose life came crashing down. I was still a child when we were raided by soldiers. Foreign soldiers. It is within the following lines that we learn why he is a ghost without a past, because he has come to no longer identify his past self as a person, because of the language and community that was robbed from him, the removal of his likeness and belonging. With each new post, my masters changed, along with the words they made me speak. With each change, I changed too. My thoughts, personality, how I saw right and wrong, Words can kill. His language kept being taken from him. First by the Germans, then by the Russians. Oslot argues that this destroyed his development. He became a ghost with no cultural roots. Just a phantom in transit from one occupying language to the next. His country, his family, his face, his identity, everything was stolen from him. During the event of Ground Zeroes, Skullface kidnapped and tortured MSF agents, along with Paz and Chico, ostensibly under the orders of Cypher and Zero. However, in the previous trailers, and in this trailer, he is seen conversing and even cooperating with Big Boss. The title of the tape could refer to many people, but it likely refers to Zero himself. As we continue on throughout the trailer, we learn that Skullface and Major Zero have conflicting ideas about the world. Major Zero wants to carry out the boss's legacy. This means uniting the world, giving everyone a common language. Free the world, not by taking men's lives, but by taking their tongues. This world will become one. I have found the way. Race, tribal affiliations, national borders, even our faces will be irrelevant. The world that the boss envisioned will finally become a reality, and it will make mankind whole again. Skullface explains how he will do it too, which serves as a foreshadowing for the Patriot AI and alludes to Zero's plan. So the Major sought a system that used information, words, to control the subconscious. The chain of retaliation is what will truly bind this world together as one. The common language Zero wants to spread is his own language, a language of controlling global information while spreading war and retaliation either through threats like nuclear deterrence or through perceived justice such as the United States invasion of Iraq during Bush Jr.'s presidency. You might notice that a lot of these examples are anachronistic. In fact, the Patriot AI's ultimate goals of creating context and controlling information is based on Dawkins' concepts of memes and the doctrine of memetics, which, although it was coined in 1974, did not take on Skullface's use of virulent spreading of information and ideas until much later in the 90s. In his eyes, the greatest symbiotic parasite the world's ever known isn't microbial, it's linguistic. With this, I'll rid the world of infestation. Sans lingua franca, the world will be torn asunder. What does creating a common language have to do with the boss's vision? Skullface himself says that America, which is setting the pattern for the rest of the Western developing world, is a place where lingua franca is not needed place which shouldn't threaten the prospect of a united world. America is a country of liberty, a meeting of immigrants. Instead of simply assimilating, its citizens live alongside others. It's true. Free speech is a foundation of the American system of democracy. America is seen as a place that encourages diversity of culture and language, 
and while the de facto language of the country is English, there is no official national language. Skullface doesn't want a common language for the world. He's lived a life without a native tongue, and so he wishes to destroy communication altogether. Sans lingua franca means without a common language. I don't know what device will purportedly be able to stop communication altogether on a person to person level, but whatever it is, it will do more than just destroy phone lines and jam radio frequencies. It will eliminate the essence of communication altogether, which is why I don't think he's referring to the Metal Gear in the trailer. Another character who symbolizes the death of Lingua Franca is Code Talker, who is one of the few remaining Navajo Native Americans who helped encode unbreakable messages in the Pacific Theater during World War II. His importance is elevated by the trailer as well. We see more of him in this one than any other. His tagline describes him as a wise man denied his homeland, not only through the United States' manifest destiny, but through the eventual death of his language. This is also the first trailer where we may even hear his voice. Since ancient times, every civilization's ruler has had the same idea. When people unite under one will, they become stronger than the sum of their parts. And what do rulers use to bring people together? Language. Speaking of language, Quiet, a character who literally can't speak, is another prominent character within the trailers, especially this one. During Code Talker's dialogue, we see Kaz briefly torture her. She symbolizes the absence of a common language, unable to give any verbal information that Kaz may need. There is no lingua franca. She is shown as an example of one who doesn't assimilate, not because she won't, but because without language, she can't. Her tongue has been taken from her, and she becomes an agent for separation rather than unity. Every time she has been shown in the trailer during a monologue, the words pertain to her. Both Skullface and Zero understand the importance of language. Words are what keeps civilization, our world, alive. See, language is innate to humans. We are born with the native grammar. The works of Pinker and Chomsky have shown that all natural languages contain the same basic three parameters. The subject, the verb, and the object. Their work created universal grammar theory, which proposes a module a mental organ that contains a tree of possible arrangements of language, along with a language acquisition device. As we develop, certain branches of this tree wither, and others become stronger. The environment will decide which patterns of grammar we follow, whether it's subject, object, verb, or many others. With this theory, we can easily link together languages that appear to be totally different from the outside, such as Navajo and English. Skullface's environment kept changing. The branches on his tree of grammar never becoming stronger, reaching a healthy state. All this exposition serves to parallel Skullface to Big Boss. We see Big Boss set Skullface's tape upright, acknowledging and accepting it, even branding it with a bloody fingerprint, part of Big Boss himself. During the opening monologue of the tape, the frame is not centered around Skullface. It's around Big Boss. And just as Skullface talks about change, we see Big Boss change from an MSF hero to a demon. It's here we see that the two men are not entirely different. Big Boss lost his nation, but the trailer argues that what Skullface lost was much greater, his very essence. The trailer even says that nationality is built around language, not the other way around. Skullface is Big Boss's foil what Boss will become if he keeps following down his path, which Skullface wants him to do. We see this in visual imagery. When Boss is hanging upside down, face covered in blood, while Skullface is upright, we see how Big Boss's face throughout the trailers becomes disfigured in a sense, coated with ashes and blood, the horns, and the eye patch. Skullface wants Boss to lose it all, to become a phantom like him, a demon. The caption cards convey this too. Everything that was taken from Skullface is going to be taken from Big Boss. Pain for pain, eye for an eye, skull for skull. Skullface is the catalytic and transformative agent who will turn Big Boss into him. He will breed him, not genetically through successive generations, but mimetically, with his ideas over time. He will breed retaliation and slowly turn Snake into a phantom just like him, and in doing so, bring about destruction. This will take place indirectly, through their communication rather than cooperation. 
I firmly believe that Big Boss punches the mirror in the end, in his own personal hell, not because of anger or hatred, but because of what he has become and who it reminds him of. Remember that from Fox, two phantoms were born. Kojima is showing us the pain that language can bring. Words can kill. Words that kill. In the same sense, he is showing the next generation that humanity has to walk the fine line between a universal language and none at all. Remember, we have universal grammar, not universal language. The diversity of speech is within the human tongue. Killing off languages is like killing off ethnicities of people. Having one language with no diversity or possibility of others is fascistic. It will kill culture. At the same time, having language is important. It's part of our nature, our very essence. It contains our culture and heritage, a symbol of everything belonging to the people of its tongue. Without it, we too would be ghosts without pasts. It's better to have a tree with only one branch than have no tree at all. The best outcome for us all is to accept language diversity. Kojima wants everyone to follow in the path of America, culminating in a world not without national borders, but without cultural ones. Places where people of all tongues can live together and celebrate their diversity, rather than be suppressed by their assimilation. 